If you like passive income, and who doesn't, you probably want to promote affiliate partners. But there are a few things you want to know to get started or to get more serious about generating affiliate revenue. These four mistakes could prevent you from supporting your partners and your audience from support only you can provide. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to She Means Fitness Business. It's a division of Voice for Fitness. And at Voice for Fitness, we know you want to be an inspirational example to midlife women. In order to do that, you need a profitable health and fitness coaching business. And the problem usually is a lack of clients or a lack of revenue because you're charging too little. And that'll all make you feel uncertain about whether you can really succeed and make a living that you love out of this. We believe that you deserve consistent, dependable revenue from clients you love working with. And I understand how it feels to be in your shoes, knowing you can help, but still not being able to, because I've been there too which is why I now train fitness pros internationally. Here's how I do it. Number one, we help you get more clients. Number two, we help you from that revenue, make sure that it's profit, more profit falling to the bottom line. And number three, we help you create freedom along the way so that you don't just paint yourself into a corner with more clients, more hours, and too little energy or time to enjoy the success you're having. So book a call with me. And in the meantime, I want you to get the Health Fitness Professionals Business Scorecard so you can stop feeling like your dream is slipping away while other less qualified and less heart-centered coaches make sales and get more clients. And instead, you can easily increase your revenue every month by at least 5,000 a month in the first 90 days. Let's dive into this juicy little episode here. So it's really going to be quick, but I want to help you avoid these mistakes. So although I'd love to help you promote affiliate partners, I'm going to start off here by giving you four ways not to, okay? So in that, you will hopefully get the answer for what should you do instead. Number one, one of the biggest mistakes that I see happen with affiliate partnerships is using ugly URLs to promote affiliate partners. What I mean by that, if you are an affiliate partner, you know this, and you probably just being someone who's online and social media, you've seen this, but maybe you didn't actually like click with it. But an ugly URL is just a really long bleep, right? A long ass, sorry, URL that has a bunch of alpha, alphabet soup at the end, probably has a number at the end, and that's your ID. And it may actually said referral partner in it somewhere. You don't want to use that. And it just feels sleazy and icky to do it, I think. But also if you're on their receiving end, I mean, they may know you're going to make some commission. In fact, if you're putting something like that on your URL or even including in an email, you want some kind of disclaimer that says, if you click on any of the links here on this website, I may receive a small commission. Well, you will pay the same or maybe get a slightly a reduced rate by using my link. That has to appear. It's legalities. Okay. So if you're doing this, make sure you've got that appearing somewhere, but don't use an ugly URL. So what I'd like to say is this is a rookie mistake, but I can't. I see a lot of experienced entrepreneurs doing this too. So either like they've turned over things to a VA who doesn't know to ask or doesn't care, like doesn't care as much as you ever would as an entrepreneur. And you may not be aware there's a better way. And so you teaching the system that you used, hand it off this mistake to somebody who's just following your instructions. Back in the day, people used to use something called Bitly. Does anybody remember that? For things like this, but that was like cumbersome and it's a third party with pretty links on WordPress. And most of us will have a WordPress site. It's easier than ever. Pretty Links is a free plugin. Once you set it, you're not vulnerable to say a platform change. If your affiliate partner used to use 
uh, platform and now they switched it. They're going to use a different platform. Well, your affiliate link is going to change. So if you've got that posted on 15 different blog posts and you don't remember which blog post it is because nobody categorizes it like that, I promise you. And you're just stuck because what's going to happen is in that blog post, if someone says, oh, I wonder, this is a live link. I'm going to click this. I'm interested in that. They're going to go to, oops, this is broken. You know, it's one of those 401 errors. And so if they care very, very much, they're going to email you. If they don't care all that much and they have a busy and important life and meaningful and they're going away. And you will never know, number one, that it's broken. So it will happen again to somebody else. Number two, they just are frustrated and now they trust you less because your links are broken and you're not updating and keeping up to date. It's like having weeds in your yard. Your neighbors don't actually think as much of you. You know what I mean? Maybe not. I I wasn't a rig real, real big weed puller, but anyway, that's a different story. Okay. So save yourself the trouble because not only will you not make the sales, but you're using real estate on your site that is really saying, we don't really pay attention here. We don't really update things or keep them up to date. So that's too bad. So sad. That's kind of what you're saying. You don't want to do that. So a pretty link not only makes an ugly URL pretty, it's the one link that you'll use all the time, everywhere that you talk about this product. Or with me, one thing that I'll do is I have a skincare line that I use and talk about. And and that's somewhat a reach and somewhat not. It ties into my business because we talk about toxins all the time getting in the way as hormone disruptors of the fitness benefits somebody wants but can't get. So I talk about skincare and um, what I'll do with a different promotion, say for Mother's Day or for the holidays, I will share the same flipping50.com forward slash skincare or forward slash skin, but I'll go in and change it to everywhere they'll see that now even though I might've shared in blog posts for the holidays, I might've shared a different, it went to a different URL at that point. Now it's going to go to this one so that everywhere it's at a current promotion. And that's always a good thing. Now, a company like Anne-Marie is big, they're detail oriented. And anytime they've done a promotion they have a redirect page that if it lands on a promotion that's no longer alive, they're going to go somewhere else. And my link will still count. But let me tell you that a lot of affiliates, especially those who are newer to being an affiliate who is promoted by somebody else, they don't do that. So if something you were promoting is no longer up, it just may be a dead end and you don't want that to happen either. So um, I'm just going through this in my own life right now. Our business life at Flipping 50, we've just hosted, we're in the middle of the, or toward the end of it. And it's the what, when, and why to exercise for women 40 plus. And so what's the What's the thing that's going on there? Well, I have a pretty link, as you might guess, instead of taking them to the ugly URL. And as soon as this event is over, I don't want to take them to that page where my third party platform is there getting the traffic. I'm going to put a new URL behind that pretty link. And this is like an algebra problem. I just realized this is the best I've ever been at math. <laughs> like it's X plus Y equals Z. Basically, that's it. So at your website, you'll have, you know, an admin and you go behind the scenes and you've created this pretty link. And the pretty link is, all right, you chose this. And what we need is we want to put in the URL, the ugly URL. And so we'll say, if they click on this pretty link, they will end up going to that ugly URL. So they will get to the right destination. But anytime you want to, you can change that out and then update it. 
So that is something that we will do so that the update then doesn't go to the live event because it's over, but it will take them to a place where we can say, we're so sad that it's over and you missed it. But if you'd like to, you can still get the recordings. Here's a glimpse of some of the interviews that you will be able to experience. So similarly, that's what you want to be thinking. A pretty link will save your life. And it it took me a long time to get this. I started working with um, a developer behind the scenes that um, probably was in 2016. And he kept talking about pretty links. And you know, some things when you start, they're sailing over your head, right? It's like you need to put a finger in the other ear so things don't sail on through because it's just like, well, this is too much. Like, I can't get this piece of tech yet because everything else is so new. This one I'm not going to get, you know, (laughs) but now it's like a couple of years later, he kept saying, use a pretty link, use a pretty link. (laughs) And now at meetings, I say to my team, I'm like, okay, so in this one, the pretty link that I use is this, is that going to the new product or the new um, launch? And he sits back and he's so funny. He's like, I'm so proud. I'm having such a proud moment. (laughs) I'm just like, darn it. Okay. So he's actually young enough probably to be my son, but I'm learning a lot from him. So pretty links will save your life. Another mistake. You include all your affiliate partners in a single email or a single blog post, if you want to say that. Listen, I'll admit that I come close to doing this, you know, once a year, every year. And that is when we share the Flipping 50 gift guide at the holidays. In our gift guide, I mean, we are selective about what we include and we choose different categories, you know, knowing that my single my single client, my single consumer, our single community member who's looking at it is buying at that time of year for a lot of different people. She's buying for acquaintances. She's buying for her future daughter-in-law. She's buying for her mother-in-law. She's buying for her best friend. And she's probably pocketing a little something for herself. You know, so we have categories like stocking stuffers. And let's face it, those are not cheap. Those are usually the most expensive. Then we'll have budget-friendly gifts for, you know, sitting on the shelf in your your linen closet for when somebody drops in with a gift and you're looking like, oh crap, I don't have anything for them. You do. You buy those things. So it's there's lots of different divisions and there's the Victoria's Secret diamond bra equivalent. Like we throw one of those in too. That's the only time you want to do something like that. Because otherwise, if you're like sending out emails and it's like, this is a link to something and that's a link to something and this is a link to something, that's just chaotic. What you do want to do unless you've taken really a lot of time to set it up and you're, say, putting a link to your plant-based protein. So I might do that and then also to my paleo-based protein and to my fiber boost. Three different products, but it serves, okay, if you want plant-based, you can't do animal protein, here's your choice. If you want something with a little bit more collagen-like substance, here's your choice. And don't forget the fiber. So I'm not causing them like this disarray. It's got to be pulled together. Okay. So that's really an important thing. Don't spam them. So set out a dedicated email that talks about one product, and then you're putting three different links in the email to the same product. You're not including three different ones. And I think a lot of times when I first got started, I didn't understand that. I thought, oh, I'm seeing three different links in this. This must be the way to do it because I see them posting all the time. And it certainly wasn't. I mean, you've got to remember (laughs) that everything you see is not money in the bank. It's not necessarily successful and working. And now you never see those kinds of marketers anymore. People are sick of it. They don't want it. So if you're promoting something, be 100% in promoting it. Because if you've got three or four links going to three or four different places in your email, 
chances are it's gambling that anybody is going to click on any one of them, right? That's not good odds. All right. So I do have a resources page. I will let you know that. So that is maybe a, a little call to, well, somebody could land there on that page and see all these different things. But most likely, if they're doing that, they got to that page, not because they're scrolling through all the tabs on my website. Who has that kind of time? They don't want to do that. They don't care that much about what it, what Deborah says at Flipping 50. I mean, I would love that, but let's be real. People have meaningful lives. They're doing other things. But when somebody asks me specifically, say in a Facebook group or Facebook page, um, or I'm doing a live or doing a Zoom or a webinar, and they ask what kind of collagen powder or what kind of probiotic or what kind of bed do you sleep on? <laughs> do you recommend? I say you can find my top picks at flipping50.com forward slash resources. And guess what? That's a pretty link, right? Because I think that page is actually called Deborah's Favorite Things, but nobody's going to remember that. But resources, that's easy. If they get to the website, they can plug that in. So there you have it. So you want to make sure that, you know, if you do a, a resources page, that makes it easy for you. And there's a lot that can be done on that page that could help you just save time and or any of your coaches, if you have them, not now maybe, but eventually that are working for you or somebody in customer service could say, well, all of her favorite things are actually right here. Okay. If you are not really, this is number three, not really investing time and energy in promoting, say this one is going to tie right into the last one. So I'm going to lump them together for explanation's sake. It's, it's the one that's coming next. Let's say if you agree or you ask to become an affiliate for somebody, and then all you do is maybe you write a blog post and you leave the promotion sit there on that blog post without actively sharing the blog post regularly or driving traffic to it or including the affiliate promotion in an email, you don't really have your heart in it. If you have hundreds of thousands of visitors to your site regularly, that's, that's one thing right? But if you're struggling, you know, to get 5,000 visitors to your website a month, chances are that hidden blog post isn't attracting very many visitors to that page. So not very many people are going to see it. You know, only a small fraction of the people who see it are going to act on it. That's not really a nice affiliate partner right? You're, you're not really a, a valuable partner for me if that's what you're doing to promoting. I'll tell you what is. So recently I had um, an affiliate partnership or have one uh, with somebody. So she promoted for me for my event. I am reciprocating and promoting for her for her event. And um, they come fairly close together, but they're non-competitive. They're in fact complementary. And she sent an email three different times. She's posted on social media. She recently had me guest on her podcast. And then from that, posted that several times on social. She taught me, she schooled me on how to be a great affiliate partner. And her list is much bigger than mine. I am forever grateful because she showed me this is who I want to be. This is how I want my affiliate partners to think about me. So I'm going to be more careful when I say yes. I'm going to be more careful when I ask to affiliate for something and make sure this isn't just something that I want to do as a win for me because I get a free product or I get a discount on a product. Or an, and generally what I try to do is score a discount for you, for my audience and um, if that's not a part of it, it's kind of hard for me to sell and promote something. So I want them to at least give you the first time in and off in trying it. I want them to give you a great incentive for doing so. Do your best really is what this comes down to. Make a plan in your promotional calendar 
I don't know when you do your publishing and your layout for promotions for the year, but I do mine in October. It's when I start thinking about it. If I haven't done it by early November, I'm actually starting to panic. I like to do that in the quarter before because I am usually then laying myself out and setting myself up for success in that last quarter of the year. So that is the point when I'll say, okay, what are we launching? What programs are we launching internally? What are our goals and what else is tied to it that we'll be promoting? And where does that leave us an opportunity to work with our affiliate partners and to promote them things that would be helping our customers be successful doing our programs? and or would be a program that puts something in front of them that they may act on if they've been in our community for a long time but haven't really acted on on anything that we're offering. You want to help people. So it may not be you, right? So with Summits, for instance, some of you fitness pros, also you were in and promoting for the what, when, and why to exercise for women 40 and over. So you earned 50% of the total sale. If somebody joined the free event, they had the opportunity to buy the recordings so that they could much more comfortably, conveniently just listen when they wanted to. And there was a, there's a quick Um, start course, um, three and a half, four week course with me that they could also take advantage of. They could do either that, they could do the recordings or they could do both together. So the affiliate revenue on each one of those sales was anywhere between 34 and $60 in your pocket. If somebody went, joined it, and if they purchased with your link. So passive revenue. If you were giving them, you know, this is free, you don't have to buy it. This is, you know, you're giving them information they want. So if you told people like busy people about it once on social media, you are lucky if 5% of the people on your social media channel saw it. It's more like one to two. And, you know, they're not scrolling back through old posts, by the way, to see your information. Your mother may do that, but then probably nobody else. So usually a quality promotion is two or three emails plus social media posts. And I'm going to talk in a in another podcast that I'm going to publish or else just recently did publish. We haven't decided what order we're releasing these about what is really the best use of social media and stories. So if you're not using them, you really, really need to do that. And, you know, you could also, in addition to the two or three emails, the social media posting you're going to do, host the event host, right, on your social media. Do that live. That's really making an effort to make the most sales, support the affiliate, and support your audience with something they need anyway. Here's another mistake, spreading yourself too thin. Now, I kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier, but one of the reasons you may not have promoted with a consorted effort is because you said yes when you should have said no. You were in the middle of your own promotion and you couldn't promote something else that was a conflict, right? Or you were trying to promote several things at once, which means nobody really gets the attention they deserve. Here's what I mean. So think about how you would respond because I'm sure you've encountered this before. If I sent you an email from the business And in it, I said, hey, I'm hosting this webinar next week. I want you to register, get registered for that. Oh, and there's also a summit that is starting in the following week that I think you're going to want to take advantage of. And this one, this live summit happens two weeks later, and you're going to want to go to that. I've just shared three different things. And now you're like, oh, oh, wait a minute. In the two minutes, you have to read that, right? Because you really didn't have time to read it and you clicked on it anyway. You're not probably going to make a decision about, am I doing this one, this one, or this one? Which one? If I'm going to do all three, do I really have time to do that? You're going to do nothing, nothing. So think about that. If you are sending multiple decisions, multiple choices, multiple ways for people to use their time, 
in an email, you are confusing them and you are getting no answer. They're not going to just choose one and and you are thinking, oh, I don't know which one they'll choose. No, they're not going to choose any. They, They just haven't got enough information about any one of them to decide that's the one I want. So similarly on your website, you know, on a web page, on a home page, are you asking them to make one more than one decision on that page? Big mistake, right? Send them to the one thing you want them to do. Is it enter their email to get something? That should be the only thing they see. So just make sure, you know, there's a couple of guidelines for affiliates. For me, you know, I would rather promote really, really well partners who I really believe in. And sometimes it doesn't work. Like right now, for instance, I can't be promoting for a great affiliate partner that I promoted for last year because I'm hosting my own event at the time when it's the runway for promoting her and her her launch, which is to a similar audience. It's just too much. If I put both things in front of my audience, they would be like what I just described, sit in the middle of the room and spin. People don't take action at all when you give them a lot of choices. You give them one, you say, what I want you to do is this. They will do that. I mean, some will, some will do anything, but you, that's not your fault. <laughs> if you put three things in front of them, it's potentially your fault. Okay. So I hated saying no to that affiliate partner, but of course she also couldn't say yes to me. It's just a timing thing. So I happen to have three other affiliate partners I love. You know, one I'm working into this promotion period because it is complimentary, but others you know, we'll have to really be fringe. And they asked, and I was very honest in saying, okay, during that period, you know, I'm only able to send something for you at the end of my event and promotions. So that shortens the window. Are you still okay with that? Before I said yes. So I always make sure I say that up front. When people ask me to speak at summits, And a part of being a speaker at a summit is implied that you will promote for the summit. It's like, they're not going to ask you if you're not willing to do that or somehow provide some collateral that gets exposure for the event. Cause that in fairness is to all speakers who are on it. But you know, I will sometimes have to say, you know, I can't right now during this time period, I cannot send a solo email, can't definitely can't send two or three of them. What I could do, if you want me still as a speaker, I can interview you for a podcast and then I can email my audience about this podcast. And in the podcast, we can mention that you're hosting a summit and that can come out so we can actually talk about it to a very engaged audience. And I can say, you know, I mean, we're at the point where we have 3 million downloads on that podcast. We have about 100,000 every month. Will that work for you? And if it won't, I understand, but I will email the podcast out that we do and do a very brief mention of, and you might be interested in the event she's hosting coming up, but it will be much more organic. And I'm upfront with them when that has to be the answer. So more often than not, that is how I promote when I'm speaking, but there are a couple really great affiliate partners that I make the exception for. So I hope that was helpful and helps you prevent any promotion mistakes that you might be making with your affiliate partner so that you can generate more revenue. I want you to have successful affiliate relationships. And I, if you could hear one thing in this podcast, it is that I hope you heard the respect that I have for the affiliate partner who it just felt like she had my back. She not only, you know, was a member of the speakers kind of network on my event, but she went out 
and promoted and went out of her way to do so. And I'm forever grateful. But the bigger message she gave me is that's how I want people to feel about me, the way I'm feeling about her. Like she had me and I'm going to have her back when I turn around and promote. And when I say yes to people, I'm going to really be very thoughtful because I think your longevity and the depth of success that you have is going to be so related and tied to the relationships that you have. And I would also suggest this. You may have had a relationship that didn't go as well, maybe if somebody wanted it to, or you can reflect that maybe I didn't do as good a job of promoting for somebody as I would have liked to. And if you want a deeper relationship with them, I would go back and visit that and say, how can I do this? How can I help you? How can I help you promote now? You know, I didn't do as good a job as I would have liked to. And now that I know what I didn't know then, I want to make it up to you. Let's do something together that really highlights the the juicy stuff that you do for people. You know, that is a saving grace. And then you've spoken out about it first before they even did. I hope that's been helpful. So for today's show notes, if you go to fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash promote affiliate partners, you will see the show notes and those four mistakes were these. Get rid of those ugly URLs. Do not any longer post them in your social media, by the way. Include all your affiliate partners in a single email or blog. No, no, and no. Just one. Highlight them. And, you know, if you're going to say yes, you've got to invest time and energy in promoting them. So avoid just saying yes to too many people, spreading yourself too thin, not thinking about what's your plan of action. And that was the last one, by the way, is spreading yourself too thin. Maybe you said yes to too many things and you really didn't give it a thought. So, all right, what are you waiting for? (laughs) The world needs you right now more than ever.